Do y'all know what color Christ is according to the Bible? No, I, I know that's what it says in the Bible. You say that's what it says in the Bible, right. but they ain't never gave us that. No, they ain't gonna give us that. They ain't gonna give us that. Let me, let me help. What's your name, bro? Shamal. Shamal. All right. So you said yes. It made us believe that uh, Christ is a white man. Yes, it did. But also, that same image also put us where? In bondage. In bondage. That's right. Physically and mentally. Because when we pray, we ain't thinking about a big, strong black man uh, with red eyes and woolly hair. Right. We thinking about an effeminate white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. That's what that image has done to our people. Right. It has also done what? Put division between our people. Right. Against dark versus light. Yeah. Against the woman, against the man. They divided us, gave us different tongues. You understand? Give me that again and then give me Deuteronomy 2849. Watch this. Psalm chapter 62. Verse 10, Come on. trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Now, it says trust not in oppression. Don't covet the things that our oppressors covet. Right. We should be righteous. We should be the holy ones on the earth. Right. The scripture is commanding us to come out from among them and be separate. Right. Right. That's what the Bible is telling us. Now, to paint the picture even better or easier for you to understand it, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Watch, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Bring it up. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee. So when it says against thee, so it says the Lord shall bring a nation against thee. Who is the thee? Anybody other than Israelite? Let me help you out. First, let me hear you first. Let me hear you, then I'll go to a scripture. Who's the thee in this verse? I'll read it, and I'll ask you again. Watch this. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee. So when Deuteronomy 28 and 49 says, God will bring a nation against thee, who is the thee? Make it plain. Bring it out. You say everybody? All right, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Oh, uh, who? All Israel. Deuteronomy is written to who? Israel. Israel. And this is what he says to Israel. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee. Who did he say that to? Israel. Right. So who's the thee? Is what? The Israelites. the Israelites. Same people. Israel, Israelites, one and the same. Alright? Now read this again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From far. Oh. Now our native and our homeland is what? Jerusalem. Bring it out. Okay? Watch this. It's, it's not Africa. It ain't Africa. Long story short, Israel was a part of Africa. But uh, what was it, in the early 1900s, Esau, which is a so-called white man today, created something called the Suez Canal, right. which divided Israel from Africa right. to make it appear as if it's not a part of that continent. Right. Okay? okay? Now, read this again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. Watch this. As swift as the eagle flying. As what? As the eagle flying. Now my question to you is, what is America's national symbol? The uh, eagle. Let's read the Bible again. Come on. As swift as... Read it again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flying. Read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. When we got to America, could we read or write? Could we understand what they were saying? Uh-uh. So let me ask you, is the Bible the true book? Man, hard. You said a hard question. Hey, I appreciate the honesty, my brother. But guess what? Our job is to bring all doubt. I'm sorry. It's to cast away all doubt. Right. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask your questions today. Right. But we're showing you right now. We're showcasing the power of the Most High God. Right. Give me that in Isaiah 46 and 10. Watch this, my brother. Because what you're going to realize, brothers, excuse me, watch this, both of you, what you realize that no other book can do what the Bible does. No other book can tell the black man where he comes from. All 
these other books make you include yourself with people who don't look like you. They make you worship gods that don't look like you. Was there another book before the Bible? No. Okay. There may have been other books, but this this only true book. Right, that's right. That's the thing about it. So like you got Egypt, right? But yes, they were there. They were a nation before Israel, yes. Like ancient Kemet. Yeah, ancient Kemet, yeah. So what was that Bible? There wasn't a Bible, but they had I could go into that. Yeah, I can answer that for you. I'll show you. I'll show you. Watch this. Give me this first, and then we'll deal with that. Come Bring on. it out. No. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. So when we're talking about the Bible, which shows us where we come from, and gives us a guideline on how to live, watch this, read it again. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. So when it comes to the sub-Saharan slave trade, when it comes to the transatlantic slave trade, and Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, that was already prophesied by the prophet Moses, who lived thousands of years, thousands of years before we even, you understand what I'm saying? The Bible has the power to do that. Right. Now your second question, give me uh, 2 Peter 3 and 5 real quick. Bring it out. 2 Peter 3 and 5, so you said what book and what were the uh, Egyptians or ancient Kemet, what were they going off of? Read that. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Read that again. A preacher of righteousness. Are y'all familiar with Noah and Noah's Ark? Heard of that story, right? All right, so give me righteousness. Give me the uh, definition of righteousness in the Bible. So it said, and spared not the old world. What happened to the old world? It was destroyed by what? Flood. The great flood, right? right? All right, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25 and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God so when it says go back to uh, Peter's 2 and 5 watch this 2nd Peter 2 verse 5 and spare not the old world but save Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness so why was Noah saved we're gonna start right here Keep it going. Keep it. He was a preacher of righteousness. Right. So why was he saved? Think about what was going on in the earth at that time. Flooding. No, before the flood. Why'd the flood come? Oh, the sin. Sin. Oh, yeah. There you go. It was a sinful earth. Right. Now, before the Mo I'm sorry, when the Most High God brought the flood, who did he keep alive? Noah and his family. Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives. Right? right? Because why? Because Noah was a what? Of righteousness, right? Now, give me that in Genesis uh, 7. Yeah, yeah, give me that. You know what I want. Now, the question is, did ancient Kemet come before Noah? Or did Noah come before ancient Kemet? Oh, you don't, you're not sure? I'm not, no, I'm not sure. Okay, okay, all praises. We're going to go over that. What about you? You're not sure? 10 and 1. Genesis 10 verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Good. So it says these are the generations of the sons of Noah. It says Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So after the flood through Noah's line, these are the um, lineages that populated the whole earth. Right. Now read it again from the top. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now. Notice it says ham. What's another way to pronounce ham? Ham is actually Kim or Kemet. So when you say ancient Kemet, it's actually talking about ham, which is the father of the Africans. Who has the Zondervan? You understand? That's who that is right there. We're gonna we're gonna read a definition for you real quick. Give me the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Give me ham. All right. So good. You're learning something today, my brother. All right, watch this. Got it? All right, read that. Okay. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood. You see? Mm. Come on. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. So I was showing you, this is the this is the forefather right here. He came before ancient Kemet because ancient Kemet came out of him. Yeah. His lineage. Yeah. You understand? Okay. Come on. He became the progenitor. The progenitor means 
the start of. Okay? Come on. He became the progenitor of the dark races. And it's gonna tell you which races. Come on. Not the Negro. Not who? Not the Negro. Not us, but the Africans. Come on. But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. So we understand now that what? Noah came before ancient Kemet. Right. Now, the thought process I want you to understand and to remember that Noah already had the laws. Right. He was a preacher of what? Righteousness. Right. So remember you asked what Bible did they have? Watch this, come on. Let's go back to Genesis 10. Read verse five, six. Genesis chapter 10, verse six. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizarim, Put, and Canaan, and the sons of, so it says, and the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Mizraim is uh, ancient day Egypt, okay? And then it says, Put and Canaan. Now we're going to focus on Canaan. I made a statement earlier that said that Israel used to be a part of what? Africa. Right. Give me Psalms 105 real quick. Psalms 105 and 16. Okay? Blind. Let me look at it. Bring it out. Yes. I want, this is what we're going to do. We're going to read 23, then we're going to jump back up, all right? Watch this real quick to prove that point when it came to Canaan and Israel. Watch this. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 105, verse 23. Bring Come on. Out. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Read that again. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. It says Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Sure. Now, go back to uh, Genesis 10. Hold that. Now read verse 5. Genesis 10, verse 5. Yeah. By these were the eyes of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families and their nations. Watch this. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, Put and Canaan. You see how Mizraim is ancient day Egypt? Canaan is ancient, I'm sorry, is present day Israel. Right. So the Israelites sojourn or they dwelt in the land of Canaan, which is present day Israel. Right. Well, that's what we want you to understand. I'm gonna show you more. Give me Deuteronomy 7 real quick. Yep. Before we inhabited the nation, the land of Israel, which was known as Canaan, we had to do what? We had to kick them out of the land. Right. Because the Canaanites, the Africans, were living in Canaan because it was a, it was a country in Africa. Right. You understand? Right. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Right. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it. You know the promised land, right? right. The promised land was what? The land of Canaan. Right. And so it says, when the Most High God, come on. Read again from the top. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gershatites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites. And the who? And the Canaanites. Why did God have to get them out of the way? So we can possess the land. Now, I ain't forgot your question about the Bible, but we had to set the, the stage. Let's go back to Psalms 105. I want you to start at verse 17. Now, understanding that Noah was a teacher of righteousness, right? He had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Ham is the father of the Africans and mainly the Egyptians. He's also the uh, father of Japheth and Shem. We come from Shem. We're Shemitic. Right. I thought we were Ham. Nah, that's, that's the deceit. Right. We've been taught that we were Ham. Right. Give me Zondervan again. Watch this. Oh. See? You understand? You're going to understand it better now. Read this definition. Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. So, Ham is the progenitor of the dark races. We've established that, but watch this. Not the Negro. Not who? Not the Negro. Now, give me the one that says cargo. Find it for me, please. Somebody find that for me. There you go, right there. That's it? Hold this one up. Check this out. All right, as, as we teach, we're going to show you something. Read that again for us. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. 
But these are the Negroes. Right. And the Negroes were taken from the west coast of Africa and brought to the New World. Yes. But you understand, the land of Ham, they're the ones who sold the Negroes to this side of the world. You understand that? And the thing about it, the white man knows it. That's why he put it in the book. Right. It's us who don't know. Right. You understand that? Okay. You see? Give me a little bit of and seven real quick. Watch yep. this. Put that down. Hey, if you don't understand, no, just... I, I see. Okay. It's making sense. It, it's making sense. But see, now, who, basically what happens is whoever owned the thinking of the age owned the thinking of the page. Wait, say that again? Whoever owned the thinking of the page owned the thinking of that age. So basically, if they wrote something to make themselves look better, they had to put it in the word. No, what they what they're actually doing? Okay, so yeah, no, no, we we don't we we're gonna we're gonna agree. We're gonna have a dialogue. So what they're actually doing, bro? Black, if you want to hide something from a black man, put it where? Right in front of him. Put it in a book, right? Right. Because they understand that when it comes to the the theologians, when it comes to the scientists, they put these things in books, knowing that we'll never read them. Right. Right. You understand? They're putting the true facts because they remember what they did to us. It's us that have no clue. Right. It's us that think that we're actual Africans because they put a curse on us. Right. Give me two scriptures, Isaiah 65, 15, and Leviticus 11 and 7. Bring it out. All right, and then we're going to go back to Psalms 105. Okay? And at any time, bro, at any time, say, we just ask a question, you know, if I'm going too fast or something. No, no, I'm just... All right, watch this. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 6. Verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. So it says the Israelites would leave their name for a curse. What kind of name would we go to? What would we start calling ourselves? We know. Huh? Jews. Jews is righteous. That's a blessed name. Right. African American is a curse name. Right. That's what you gotta understand. To be a Jew, that's righteous. Yeah. To be an Israelite, that's the greatest thing on the face of the earth. Right. To say you're an American, that's a curse. Right. To say you're an African, that's a curse. Right. To say you're a Jamaican, a West Indian, a Puerto Rican, those right. are curses. Right. Right. You understand? Read this again from the top. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. And call what? and called his servants by another name. Give me that, Leviticus 25 and 55. Who are God's servants? That's what we got to understand. He said he's going to call his servants by another name. Right. His servants ain't everybody. Yes. What did you say? Negroes. There you go. You said what? Negroes. Negroes, which are Israelites. Right. And we're going to show you that next. Give me that in uh, Acts 13 after this. Read this. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. Bring it out. For unto me... The children of Israel, watch this, the children of who? The children of Israel. Come on. Our servants. Our what? Our servants. Remember he said he's going to call his servants by another name? Right. So he's going to call the Israelites by a different name. Right. We won't be known as Israel anymore. We won't be known as Jews anymore. We'd be known as African Americans. Right. These different nationalities that were placed on us by our oppressors. Right. Now you said Negroes. You're 100% correct. Even though that's still a derogatory term, it simply means black. Right. We're going to show you that. Give me Acts 13 and 1. Acts chapter 13 verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. So the church is who? Who is the church? Do you know who that is? The people. Which people? Now, sure. Let's get it for him. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Read that again. Do you need some water? Oh, no. Okay, no. Let, hey, let me know if you need some water. I just got an ear infection. It's, yeah. I understand. Yeah. All right, read this again. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. So, who did Moses lead to the wilderness? Um, was it Israelites? It was the Israelites. Yeah. That's what the, remember what I said when it says, I was like, sis, you got to stop. This whole Bible was written to one people. As you can see, over and over and over again. Read that again for us. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. With the, yes. All right, now give me add an Acts 13. Watch this. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. Watch this. That was called nigger. They were called who? That was called nigger. They were called what? Called nigger. You see that? 
the prophets, the church, which are the Israelites, they were called what? That was called nigger. Nigger is another term for Negro. It's the same, one of the same. Right. Right. Nigger, Negro, both means black. black. Right. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Watch this. You never heard this because guess what? Who set up the Christian churches today? Our oppressors right. with that image right there. Right. They ain't never going to teach you that you're actually the people of the book. Because right. once we realize that, that means we're about to get up out of here and they're going to become our servants. That's, right. That's what it means. It's role reversal. There's never equality. Equality ain't in the Bible. Right. You ain't going right. to find it. You're going to find a ruling class and somebody in servitude. Right. That's what you're going to find. Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Hello. Judah mourneth. Who? Judah mourneth. You see that? Who is Judah? Black America. There you go. Come on. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are what? They are black. What does Negro or nigger mean? Black. It means black. Right. That's why we were called nigger. And in today's, as we know, we're called Negro. Right. African American, all that. All those um, African American is a derogatory term. That's why they said Negroes for sale. They didn't say Africans for sale. There's a difference between an African and a Negro. Right. And we're going to show you that. Leviticus 11 and 7. Exodus 11 and 7. Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel. Read. Shall not a dog move his tongue. Come on. Against man or beast. Read. That ye may know. That we may know. Watch this. How that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians. God puts a difference between the Africans. We right. and Israel. And Israel. Yes. We look similar, but our line is different. Yes. They are Hemetic or Kemetic, and we are Shemetic right. or Semitic. Right. You see how they changed the names, right? Originally, it was Hemetic, but today they call it Kemetic. Originally it was Shemitic, but now they call it Semitic to cause more confusion. You see that? Now, let's go back to Psalms 105. So yeah, when it came to the ancient Egyptians, did they have knowledge? There's no doubt about it. But where did they get that knowledge from? Their forefather Noah. You see that? Now watch this. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 105 verse 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Remember, his brothers sold him to the Arabians, and they sold him into uh, slavery to the Egyptians. Read. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. Meaning what? He was in shackles. He was in prison until the time where his word came, when he was supposed to do the will of God. Read. The word of the Lord tried him. Come on. The king sent and loosed him. The king sent and loosed him. Let's, be, let's find out what the king did for him. That's Pharaoh. Read. Even the ruler of the people and let him go and let him go free. Read. He made him lord of his house. Remember, he made him second in command over all of Egypt. Right. Read. And ruler of all his substance. Come on. To bind his princes. To do what? To bind his princes. Watch this. At his pleasure. Read. And teach his senators wisdom. And teach his senators wisdom. Meaning what? Joseph, who was an Hebrew right. or an Israelite, right. taught the Egyptians wisdom. Right. Meaning what? When it comes to the knowledge and the wisdom of the Egyptians compared to the Israelites, there is no comparison. Right. Sorry, sorry. Is it the same Pharaoh that sentenced Christ to death? Is it the same Pharaoh? No, no, no. There was no, no Pharaoh didn't sentence Christ to okay. death. That was Pilate. Pilate. That was the Romans. Roman. Okay. Yeah, this is the Egyptians way before way the Romans. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But we went there to show you that, yes, the Egyptians did have ancient knowledge. But right. the Most High God allowed Joseph from the seed of Shem okay. to teach the Hamites wisdom okay. that they didn't know or nor did they have. And we're going to show you something real quick. Leviticus 18 and 1. Look it out. I'm going to show you that the Egyptians, they may have had some knowledge, but they wasn't on our level. Right. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. Bring it out. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Watch this. 
and after the doings of the land of Canaan. Whether I bring you, shall ye not do. You see that? He brought us to Canaan, which was now called Israel. Right. Read. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So meaning what? The way that they do things, we shouldn't do anymore. Right. Watch this. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Read. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if I am which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Now, is that verse 6 or 7? Read verse 7. Watch this. Verse 7. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. What does that mean? You want me to read it again? The nakedness of thy mother, father, and the nakedness of thy mother should not be uncovered. What does that mean? In layman's terms, make it plain for us. I would, I would think Adam and Eve... No, 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 make it easy to be understood. Okay. Read it again. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. Okay, so don't take off your clothes. Right. Think about it. When you have sex, you have it with your clothes on. You take them off. So the Egyptians used to do what? Have sex with their fathers. Have sex with their mothers. But God delivered the children of Israel. How you doing, brother? God delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt right. and told us to do what? Don't do what the Egyptians do. Right. You understand that? Little bit? If you're not, no, I'll get you follow? Yeah, okay. Get Read on. What are we reading? We're reading our history in the Bible, my brother. Watch this. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Meaning what? If you have a stepmother, who your father's married to, you can't sleep with her. Right. Read. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness shall thou not uncover. You can't sleep with your stepsister right. or your sister. You can't do these things. Right. But that was common practice in Egypt. Right. Leviticus 21 and 5. Yeah. So now you can see that yes, the Egyptians had, yeah, they had great knowledge. That's how they were able to become a great nation. But God says, I have a chosen people who I'm going to give more wisdom to, right. better knowledge to. Right. We're the true source of all wisdom. That's After right. this, give me that in Baruch to show just that. Yeah. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Because the Egyptians, ancient Kemet, they were smooth. They had no hair on their face, no hair on their heads. So God said, I'm going to make a difference between Egyptian and Israel. How did he do it? Leviticus 21 and 5. Come on. Yep. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Because that's what the Egyptians do. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard nor make any cuttings in their flesh. No brandings, no tattoos. Come on. That's it. That's it? That's now it. give me that in Baruch. Watch this. You got it? Four and one. All the ways of the... Oh, no, 36. 336. Watch this. Baruch chapter 3, verse 36. He had found out all the way of knowledge. So here's the key. God has found out all of the ways of knowledge because he created everything. Right. Okay, watch this. He hath found out all the way of knowledge, and hath given it unto Jacob. Unto who? Jacob. Unto Jacob. Who is Jacob? Do you know uh, who Jacob is? Israel. Right. You heard of the Israelites? Yeah. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. All right, read this again. He hath found out all the ways of knowledge, and hath given it unto Jacob, his servant and to Israel his beloved. You see that? So when it comes to all of the great knowledge, it ain't given to everybody. Right. Did uh, Egypt have some laws? Ancient Kimmy? Yeah, they did. They had some knowledge, but they didn't have it all. Right. He gave all of that to the Israelites. That's right. I just came to my mind. Give me that in 1 Kings 4. Bring it out. All of the knowledge more than the East Country. King Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, was an Israelite. All right, watch this. You got it? Watch this. 29. 1 Kings 4 and 29. Come on. First Kings chapter 4 verse 29. I want you to listen real close because we're trying to make the distinction between Israel and Egypt, right? Watch this. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore. 
And Solomon's wisdom. And Solomon's what? And Solomon's wisdom. Come on. Excel the wisdom of all the children of the East Country. It said it excel all the wisdom of the East Country and and all the wisdom of Egypt. And all the wisdom of who? All the wisdom of Egypt. So yeah, we're not we're not refuting the fact that Egypt was a great nation, but when it comes to the Israelites, we better than them. That's the thing about it. The Israelites are better than everybody on the face of the earth. Thus saith the Lord. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.